Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Google Earth Studio to create really cool sci-fi animations using Big Film's latest pack, the Sci-Fi Pack. And it's got a lot of cool, interesting things in there. And I'm really excited to show you what we can do with this new pack. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we made this shot. Note that we didn't use any drone shots for this footage. This is all made through Google Earth Studio, which is a free tool that anybody can use to create epic shots like this. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to google.com slash earth slash studio, and then you're gonna to wanna to hit the try earth studio. Because it's still in beta, you're gonna to wanna to enter in a survey, and then for me, I got access to it that day, so just make sure you sign up for the survey and all that stuff. So if you click try earth studio, I've already signed up, so it will just take me to Google Earth Studio. Okay, so you're now greeted with this intro page, right? Uh, what you're going to want to do is hit blank project. Then we're going to uh, name the project. I'm going to call this cool spaceships. We're going to click earth because that's the world we live on. Um, I hope you knew that. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is fine. The HD 450 frames will be okay. You can adjust that later. And uh, the frame rate will change to 24 frames per second because that is the cinematic frame rate. All right. So now we're going to hit start and we're greeted to this beautiful world. You can hit the left click button and sort of, you know, pan around. You can use the middle scroll and sort of scroll in and such. Uh, you can also hit the middle mouse button, click on it, and then kind of orbit around like that. Uh, but uh, an easy way to find a specific location uh, is going to the top left corner, clicking the search button, and I'm gonna type in Manhattan. I already searched for it, so it just, goes there because I live in Los Angeles. I don't have access to Manhattan. So I thought it'd be cool to make a Manhattan spaceship scene. All right, so now we're going to use the middle scroll wheel to scroll down, use our uh, little pan but uh, our left click to sort of pan around here. Then uh, I'll click the middle mouse button to orbit around. Uh, and I kind of want to do a scene where it sort of flies through these buildings. Uh, you can also change uh, positions down here, um, like the altitude. And by the way, this stuff that's grayed out is what the camera can't see. The camera can only see this part right now. So that's going to help you a little later. So we can adjust the altitude down here. Uh, we can adjust the latitude and longitude, you know, just like that. But a uh, good way is just left click and drag. And I kind of want a shot that goes like this through the city. Uh, we can also change the pan and tilt. So I might tilt this up a little bit. And as I drag back, I think that will make for a good um, shot. Maybe we'll lower the altitude a bit. So we're getting, we're catching a little bit of the tops of these buildings a little bit more. But there, there's still limitations to this. So if you hit add attributes, you'll actually find a couple things that are really helpful. Um, uh, like field of view. So that's how wide um, the camera is or how tight the camera is. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click on time of day because time of day, we can actually change what the lighting looks like, which is really helpful. Um, and then we're going to add roll, which is how the, the camera sort of rolls. So we're going to hit done. Uh, now we'll have all those attributes on here, like time here. So if we, we change the time to maybe earlier in the morning, let's say uh, 13, which is military time, so that's 1 p.m., I believe. Um, and that looks pretty good. We can also like scroll this, click and drag the time, and we can sort of change the time of day pretty nicely. I'm going to do it. Uh, I like the, the, the light to be a little more sidey like this, so I think... 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock sort of works well for um, this situation here. Then we have the camera lens uh, option, and we can uh, make this wider, like a wider angle lens, or tighter. I make make it like a tiny bit tighter because if it was a helicopter camera chasing these things, they might want to get closer in, so they might have a tighter lens on the camera. Uh, and then our roll is in here, and that just changes our roll like that. Um, yeah, so now we have everything we need to start making a cool shot. And I'm going to hit this button, which is keyframe all attributes. So we're going to click that 
and a bunch of keyframes will be made. So these little dots here, if you've ever used After Effects or even Premiere, you'll be very familiar with this. Then we're gonna move down in the timeline, let's say 150 frames, and I'm gonna click and drag and go down here. And then I'm going to click the keyframe all attributes again. And now if we go to the beginning and hit spacebar, we have a shot that's moving, which is pretty interesting. And I think it's a little too slow, so I might um, bring this in a little bit, maybe to 120 frames. So you can just click and drag that over, hit spacebar, yep, and that's looking pretty cool. So we can also go to the, the keyframes here and start changing things around and it will automatically key something for you. So let's say we want to roll the camera this way, and at the very beginning we want to roll the camera the other way, like this, and so when we are playing, it sort of tilts and dutches as it goes, and it's kind of fun. Um, and then we can also like change the altitude, maybe it's a little bit lower at first, and then it goes up, just like that. Um, we can also change the pan and tilt, so I might tilt this the camera up slightly at the beginning. And that's looking pretty good. Cool. So obviously the, uh, the, the, the animation ends at the end there, um, and we have all these extra keyframes and stuff. Uh, a way to get that um, to work is click this little yellow um, little guy here and move it to the last keyframe, just like that. And now you've set the keyframes for your scene. Cool, now we have this really cool scene. Um, we can also, um, go in here and if you wanted to change this because all the keyframes are linear meaning it starts fast uh, and then it ends abruptly so it's it starts abruptly and it ends abruptly but if say you wanted the the animation to slow down um, you can go in here and click on any of these attributes over here and you'll go into a um, graph editor for that um, property and uh, if you've ever used After Effects or, or Premiere, this again will be sort of familiar to you. Uh, right click on your, um, your keyframe and then change this to something like Auto Ease. So now what we're doing here is we're telling it to slow down the latitude animation. So as it goes, it slows down, which is pretty cool. So it's, it's something, for this particular instance, we don't have to do anything crazy like this but it's super helpful to know that you have a lot of control. So now once we have a good animation, we can hit render. Um, and because we set our keyframes, we're at 120 frames. Um, we also have this uh, watermark. So the way that I get rid of the watermark uh, is making sure you unlock the aspect ratio. So click that little thing so it's not changing the num both of the numbers at the same time. And then I'm gonna increase this to 2,600 frames. And then I'm going to move this Google Earth all the way to the corner. And the, the reason why we're doing that is we're still using 1080 frames, uh, 1920 by 1080 frame. Uh, we're just cutting this off. So basically we're only going to be using uh, the, the left half of this frame. Um, and then you can click on this advanced tab and you can even uh, upload um, 3D tracking data for After Effects. We don't need it in this particular instance because we're gonna have stuff floating in the air, uh, but that's super helpful to know if you need it for any other purpose. Make sure your map style is clean and your textures are high. Now, if you were getting text on your buildings and stuff, uh, if you right click and go to map style, just make sure that is set to clean just like so. But you can also do it here where you can make the map style clean. So now uh, we're going to make sure that image sequence is clicked um, and it'll just make a JPEG image sequence. Uh, go to your destination folder and we'll just um, select a folder. Um, I'll, I'll just put it in a folder labeled spaceships and hit select folder. Um, make sure you hit view files as well. And now we should be all ready to go. Um, hit start and then make sure you save the changes. So it's just gonna take a second and render out your animation. And then once it's done, we're gonna bring that into After Effects and do a lot of fun stuff with it.
please note that all of these steps can actually be done in any software like Premiere, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci. I'm just using After Effects today, but just know that you could do this in any software you choose. What we're gonna do is import in our footage here. Um, we're going to take that and uh, make sure if you right click the footage, go to interpret footage and go to main, uh, change the assume this frame rate is to 24 frames per second. And that way um, it will be, it will know that it's 24 frames per second because when you import a JPEG sequence, it doesn't know if it's 30 frames a second or 24 frames a second. So you have to input that in. Uh, so we'll hit okay after that and drag and drop it into a new composition. Um, I'm going to uh, right click on this and go to composition settings and change this to 1920 by 1080 and hit okay. So this is why we rendered it slightly wide. We're just going to move this over. So we cut out that Google um, logo. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. I might move it over slightly more. Yeah, that, that looks pretty cool. Whoa. So first thing we're gonna wanna do is add in our new sci-fi pack elements. And we have this really cool space fighter. We're going to import that in like so. And it's a 4K file, so it's gonna be pretty big, but we're gonna scale it down and we'll just drag and drop it in and already it's looking pretty good. <laughs> but the, the one problem we, we are seeing with the background is that it's so sharp as it moves through and that doesn't make sense because if it's moving that fast, you would see motion blur happening on these buildings. So what I like to do is going in here and typing in pixel motion blur and what that's going to do is in find movement in your shot and add blur to it and so when we play forward it is a chugging you know it's a very render heavy uh plugin it's gonna slow down your project a little bit more so you might want to turn that off while you're editing and then turn it on at the end when you're rendering um, but look at the difference it looks so much more like it's moving and cinematic and such um, you can also change the samples because if we look in here, you can kind of see this ghosting effect. And if we bring this up to something like 10, um, it, that ghosting effect goes down lower. Um, but yeah, that's just a really cool effect to do. We can also go in here and try to match um, the colors. So I might add a Lumetri color a little bit to the back background here. And, you know, maybe mess with the exposure a bit or the contrast maybe the temperature is a little bit warmer to sort of try to match the spaceship a little bit and just doing a few tweaks to make it feel more real right uh now let's add the other spaceship fighter uh and we're going to scale that down and we're probably going to put him flying back behind him like that so as you can see, we have a really cool spaceship scene of these guys sort of flying and having some fun times with each other. Uh, and also in the sci-fi pack are these cool laser blasts and we're gonna put them on top of everything. And uh, we're gonna find the laser blast that is at the right angle, which is the second laser blast. And then we're going to sort of trim this by hitting um, alt and open and close bracket like that. And I'm going to move this and scale this down to for, sort of fit the frame and, and make sure it's coming from the spaceship. So it's shooting lasers at them like that. And then I'm gonna duplicate that a couple times uh, place it properly where it needs to be so it's shooting at them and I'm really excited for you guys to get this pack and, and really play with this and see what you guys can do because uh, you know using this Google Earth Studio thing it really does open up your world of like what you can do you can even find your place of life you know where you live and, and do your own little thing here um, 
So this is really cool. Um, now it's just the last little touches. Let's add a vignetting. So we'll hit Control Y and make sure this solid is black. Hit OK. Make comp size. Hit OK. Then we're going to go up here to the ellipse tool. So we're just going to click on this, hold, go to the ellipse tool, double click. That will create a mask around your frame. Hit, uh, go over to this mask section and go to subtract and then hit F on your keyboard and feather. Then we're going to hit T on our keyboard and lower the opacity and make sure that's above everything. And that will just add uh, everybody looking at the frame just like that. Um, and then what I like to do, let's go into add adjustment layer, hit control alt Y. Let's go in and add chromatic aberration. Now this is a free plugin called quick chromatic aberration. Uh, which is by Plugin Everything, uh, PluginEverything.com. Um, it looks really weird right now, but you just have to uncheck Unmalt and it will be fine. Um, and basically, what that does, if I up this to like one or something, it just adds some separation and it makes it look like the camera wasn't perfect. And just those little touches will be really cool. Let's also add glow to this and increase the radius by a lot and then let's lower the uh, threshold a little bit and lower the intensity and that will just make things uh, fit a little bit more as well so whenever it's in front of the sky it will bleed in a little bit more um, yeah, so that's all it was. It's once you've got the Google Earth Studio thing, it's more just playing around and making it look nice. And that was it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something new. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell. All those things that YouTubers say to do. I, I don't ask for much. All right, guys. Peace out.